What is up dudes, it's Jeremy. Today I'm going to be doing a discussion video on Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, which has been out for a few years, so this is going to be more of a discussion on why you should go back and watch this, uh, whether you've seen it already or you skipped over it when it first came out. So Scott Pilgrim vs. The World is one of my favorites of all time. For reals. It did absolutely horrible in the theaters when it first came out, and I think part of the reason for that is it wasn't marketed well. Um, I think that Michael Cera actually had a huge uh, role to play in that because Michael Cera had just gotten done with all these movies and I think everybody's just sick of him and they're like, oh, look at this, another Michael Cera awkward teenage movie. And don't get me wrong, like Michael Cera is still playing Michael Cera, but it's not like he's the only thing supporting this movie. The, the movie has a huge cast and, and it's got some incredible writing that really it doesn't matter if it's Michael Cera or anyone else, it still would have been a great movie in my opinion. So speaking of the writing, it's written by Edgar Wright, who is, in my opinion, one of the best writers of all time. The guy knows, he knows editing, some of the best editing I've ever seen. Um, it, it gives it such a unique style with the way he does things. Um, so he knows editing, he knows physical comedy too, which is something that I think is a little bit more difficult to do now, or at least a little bit more difficult to actually get people interested in now. He also just knows comedy in general. He knows how to write a good script. He knows how to write a good screenplay. The Cornetto trilogy is of course one of my all time favorites. And I didn't know the first time that I watched this that it was him. But once I realized that it was Edgar Wright, it all clicked and I'm like, that's why something stuck with me from this movie. So no matter how much you hate Michael Cera, I think that you're going to find something that you could really enjoy out of this movie because of Edgar Wright. He just knows what he's doing. The other thing uh, that I think didn't help this movie out a whole lot is that there's, it's got a, a unique community that the movie is gonna just hit the nail on the head for. And a lot of other people may find little bits that they're interested in, but it's not gonna be the same. I uh, fortunately was one of those small community people. And what I mean by that is, it's got all of these jokes, all of this humor that's based around like video games, especially retro gaming. Um, it's also got this, this punk alternative, um, not just humor, but also like overall theme. Like there's so much music, all of the music, and so many things that are, like I said, just like this punk alternative style. And so for me, it's like, oh, cool, I like all that stuff, so I like this movie. And it's, that's not the case for everybody, but again, just like Michael Cera, the whole movie doesn't rely on that. Um, there, there's so, just so many things like that that you can look past. You, you know, you don't have to, I'm not saying that every single person is gonna love this movie. But I just think it's one worth rewatching. Moving on to like the supporting cast, like I was talking about before. Um, I, I thought it was fun to go back and watch this because there are so many people that are much, much bigger now after seeing this. Like Anna Kendrick, uh, she plays Scott's like witty sister. Really enjoyed her character. Um, Brie Larson plays the lead singer of Clash of the Demon Head, which is like, she's like the, uh, oh my gosh, like the Joan Jett, like, the, just this goddess, this punk goddess that everyone worships, and uh, it, you know, it's really cool to see her. There's so many. And, you know, okay, so Chris Evans is another one. He's known, he was known when the movie came out, but he's still, he knows, he's good at humor too. Like, I, I really like Chris Evans a lot, and he nails the part of this super douche ex-boyfriend. Um, it's actually like one of my favorite subtle moments of the movie is when he's, he's walking away and he's looking at his cell phone and he's like, ah, that's actually hilarious. <laughs> okay, so that's just a couple, but there's so many. The entire supporting cast is really, really great and they all have uh, some really great moments, not just humor moments, but just in general. They're just fun characters to watch. Young Neil, Knives, I love them all. Now, for those of you that are into alternative punk music, whatever, and I think that Alternative is starting to pick up a little bit more than it has in the past, so maybe it's another reason worth rewatching if you're starting to get into that kind of music. But uh, Brie Larson's cover of the song, and I think it's Hectic, is the name of the band, or Hex, I can't remember exactly, but her cover of that song is way better than even the actual song written by the band. Um, all of the music for the, for the movie is great great stuff and not that that's all uh because of edgar wright but uh his movies in my opinion have always had really stellar soundtracks 
Anyways, it's great music. Add it onto the list of things that I love about this movie. And then getting into some more spoiler type stuff, and this is definitely for those of you that have already seen it. Um, Scott Pilgrim is not a likable character in the beginning, and he's not supposed to be. And I think because of his appearance in the movie, because of his demeanor in the movie, because it's Michael Sarah, I think that's something that's harder for some of us to grasp. And so because of that, um, Scott Pilgrim just comes off as this whiny bitch for the whole movie. And you're like, why? I have no interest in watching this guy. And I, I'm not really sure. I don't really have a way. I don't have something I can tell you to just like, oh, just get over that. Uh, because you might not be able to just get over it, but I think it's important to note that and I, I haven't read the comics Not even to this day, even though I love the movie. I would love to I need to but from what I understand in the comics It's much more apparent that Scott Pilgrim is a douche uh, He's doesn't look like some of the other douches like the douche ex-boyfriends, but he is one and so You go through this whole movie, right? And and so not all of like the development not all of the character change is super obvious like in a lot of movies but I think that What's up, buddy? But um, I, I think that that's part of the reason. Again, because of his appearance, because of his demeanor, you're not like, oh, he's definitely a changed man now. But it's there. It's still there. And I think that's just another thing that's important to think about because it, he's the main character. So if you don't like the main character, uh, you're going to have a hard time liking the movie at all. Anyways, dudes. Cannot say it enough times. I love this movie. Please rewatch it. Rewatch it for Dude, It's Jeremy. And um, let me know what you're thinking below, because I was a fan of this movie from the beginning. Actually, actually, now that I think about it, I wasn't. The first time I saw this movie, I had to stop watching this movie. It was on TV, and it was because it wasn't marketed right, and I was expecting something totally different. So I watched it, and I'm like, wow, I'm really not a fan of this, and I changed the channel. And I come back, and I watch it, like, maybe a couple weeks later or something. It was on TV again, and I couldn't change it. I don't know. But I watched it again, and it was like a complete 180 because I knew a little bit more of what I was getting myself into this time around. And again, that makes such a huge difference, and it's one of the reasons that I have completely boycotted trailers. I'll watch trailer one for a movie, and that's it. I don't like to watch any more trailers because of that reason. There's so many movies that my whole perspective has been changed because of all the trailers and all the TV spots and all the interviews and all that shit that we all watch on the internet. Anyways, dudes, let me know what you're thinking below. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. I really want to get into doing some more of these discussions, so let me know if you've got any requests. I'm all for the old, the new, whatever. Um, so yes, thanks for watching, dudes.